Great. Well, let's make a start. Thank you for joining this session. We're hoping to get through this in an hour and show you really some of the exciting features that we've been working on for AlignMix Professional 2018. So just a brief introduction. I'm Steve, Steve Morn. I've uh, been doing this type of work, Salesforce strategy, for many years, 28 years, uh, in various guises and completed uh, well over 220 Salesforce strategy projects in 45 plus countries. Uh, I'm the president of Cosmex, who actually develop uh, AlignMix. And I'm also joined by Joey, Joey Domagala. Uh, Joey, would you like to say a quick hello? Hello, everyone. I'm sure I've spoken to many of you that are on this call, and um, I'll be here running the second portion of the meeting today. Great. Now, if you have any questions as we're going through this webinar, uh, you have a number of options. If you can uh, send a message via the Join Me messaging service to Joey, I think he's just down as Joey on the list, or um, feel free to email him if, uh, if that's easier, joey.domagala at alignmix.com. So uh, let's make a start just to give you uh, just to give you a, a bit of background on AlignMix. So we launched AlignMix back in April 2016. It took 10 years to develop. Uh, what you see as the current iteration is actually the fourth complete rewrite. Uh, it's been very successful. We've had about 5,400 trial users, and we currently have around about 300 active users. So uh, AlignMix as you all know, is for sales territory design. Uh, our focus, our passion is to make software that is really easy to use, that is uh, nice to use, uh, which is, dare I say it, beautiful. So uh, we have this beta version that we sent out to some testers, and we've had some very positive feedback. Um, Zendesk, which is one of our customers, they gave us some feedback on the test version. We love the new ability to export to Google Maps. We can share maps with sales, marketing, and other cross-functional teams in a way that is scalable and dynamic to their needs. So we try to give them the best support, of course. Uh, Basso Health um, is another big fan. Uh, AlignMix 2018 is absolutely incredible. I'm having fun uh, seeing what it can do. I gave a few people from our leadership teams and Google Maps built with it and they're seriously impressed. He also really likes the way it uh, spits out the, uh, the KML structure and um, he wants us to thank the uh, development team. Shimadzu, uh, love the update to AlignMix with, with regarding to publishing to Google Maps. It has allowed me to share critical information with my sales and support staff. So that's some of the reactions that we've had to uh, the ability to export to Google Maps. Um, in this session, we're obviously going to go through how you can export to uh, Google Maps. Um, we're going to talk about some other export options, and there are some other ways of aggregating data as well. Uh, we're going to look at the enhanced index calculation. And probably after the Google Maps export, that is the one additional feature that uh, we're really excited about. Uh, not only can you create an index, uh, and an index being a, uh, an, a combination of factors that you're trying to balance. You can create an index based on the data. You now also create it based on the number of accounts and on the drive time, and that's the big one. Uh, so that's really uh, an interesting feature that we're going to be de demoing in this webinar. We're also going to be taking you through 2018 launch offers that uh, I know many of you are interested in and outline some in-person training and where you can really maximize your investment in AlignMix to become an expert. And finally, we're going to have a question and answer session. Again, send those questions to joey.domagala at alignmix.com uh, or message him in the Join Me app. So uh, with that, I'm actually going to pass the baton over to Joey. He's um, really good at dem demoing the application and taking you through things. So hold with me while I uh, pass that to him. My word. There you are.
All right. Can everyone hear me? Well, I can. So let's take that as a yes. Okay. So without any further ado, we're just going to jump into the main feature that everyone is waiting for, and that's the Google My Maps. And as you can see here on my screen, this is a territory design that I've exported from AlignMix and then imported it here into Google My Maps. And you can see I can just hover over these territories. I can click on one of them, and it'll display all the data that I had in AlignMix. Now you can see it in Google My Maps. So you're essentially exporting a KML file. And any platform that can use that type of files, you can import those from AlignMix. If you have Google Earth, you can do something similar just like that too. So this is the same file just imported into the Google Earth software. You can zoom in, you can see all of your territories and move that around. So now I'm going to go through the process of actually creating one of those Google My Maps from scratch. Well, from my already created AlignMix file. So on the screen, you should see a map of the US with 100 sales territories created. And as you're probably familiar with, to export, you go to File, Export, and now you've got a new export button, Export KML File. So that's what we're using for this export, and then we're going to import it into Google My Maps. So if I click on KML Export, I'd like to export all four of these, territory boundaries, district boundaries, accounts, and sales reps. Click Next. For this example, I'm gonna select all the territories. I just so want you, all the, so, so you just You've just got a, a, a lot of options here. We're not gonna go through absolutely everyone, but basically you can uh, export at the national level, at the district level, uh, or you can even do a batch export so that you're just doing each territory. Go ahead, Joey. Sorry. All right, then I click Next. Same goes for districts. If you had some districts that were not visible on the map, you would select the second option to only have the visible ones shown. But for this example, I'm gonna do all the districts. Click Next. You can choose what type of accounts to show. Uh, if you didn't want any accounts, then you would not select any options. But for this example, I'm going with all accounts, and I'm going with all sales reps. In this screen, you can choose which data sets you want to export. Now, some of this information may be sensitive or confidential, so maybe you wouldn't want your sales figures to be displayed in Google My Maps and then share. So this is where you can choose which one of those data sets to omit from this export. And I'm going to click Next again. Here you can customize how everything will be exported, and it defaults to exporting as a KMZ file, which is kind of a zip file for these KML files. We recommend using that. Um, it's to help import them underneath the uh, maximum megabyte size into Google My Maps. So typically you'll leave that as the default setting. Click Next again, and now I'm just going to save this on my desktop, and let's just do and I'll export, and I'm going to save my territories first. Click Save. And once again, I'm going to save all the accounts, the districts, and also the sales reps. Okay. So now, if we bounce back to Google, to access your Google My Maps, you simply type in Google My Maps. And there's a difference between My Maps and Google Maps. Um, Google Maps is just a regular mapping platform that Google uses. Google My Maps uh, is available to anyone with a Google account, is a map where you can customize how it looks. That's why it's so easy to import these KML files into Google My Maps. So once you've pulled that up, you click My Maps, and then you just click on Create New Map. And the software will load up with a blank slate of the US, and all you have to do is click on this button that says import. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna select starting off with my territories file. So let me do that and click territories and click open and let that suck in all that data and give that a moment to load up. So when that loads up, you can see that all of my territories have now been imported into Google My Maps. 
If I zoom into an area like I did earlier, you can click on it and see all that data. Now this is extremely powerful because now you can share this information with people that don't have a line mix. So all you would have to do is click on the share button, give it a name. So let's just do sample of terror and click OK. You can make it public to have anyone with this link view it. So I'm just going to click Save there. I'm going to copy that link, and I'm going to go in an incognito mode and then paste that link. So if you were sharing this map with others, this is how that map would be displayed on their end whenever it loads. Hold on. Did it not save correctly? <sighs> Come on, Google. There it is. I didn't save. So now if I zoom in, this is how it will look when you share it with other users. When you click on the territory, it'll give you a breakdown of all the data here on the left-hand side. So you can also do this type of export. Let me just close out of here at a single district level. So let me go here to California. And during that export process, there was all those options to choose from. And one of those was to export just a single district. And in doing so, you can see all the sales reps appear. We have all the territories that are just assigned to this California district. So this type of map can be shared with just a district manager, and then he or she will be able to evaluate their district and their district only without seeing the clutter of all the other territories and districts. Okay. You can also, uh, in within Google My Maps, you can turn on and off the layers. So as an example, you can see the reps uh, on here, but if Joey toggles it, then they can turn them off. So that's why we export as different files, because they come in as a different layer in my maps, and, um, uh, and you can customize them as you want. So just think of the possibilities. Uh, you can potentially batch export all the districts, and then you could give the district manager a, a link and they could see exactly where their territories were in relation to one another without seeing the rest of the country. You could batch export all the territories and you could just send a file to each of the reps and say, look, this is your territory and you can see it exactly where it is on the map. And of course, you have all the resolution of Google Maps where you, they can zoom in and see exactly what's in and what's out of their territory. So it's very powerful. The other thing about my maps is you can embed these maps in a um, web page. So you could do this on a, an intranet, or you could do it on your website so that maybe customers come along and they want to know which territory or uh, services their particular area. They could just click on and see exactly which territory or which number they should call. So it's very powerful. Great. And as you can see on this example on the screen right now, I've enabled all four labels. So I actually turned on the sales reps, turned on some accounts, territories and districts. So there's a whole lot of data being displayed and you can toggle those on and off as you wish. So the My Maps capability is very powerful. So now I'd like to change gears and quickly go back to AlignMix. Now for some of our users, you already may be familiar with the radial tool. And that's when you right click on a sales territory and you get this button. But here you can customize how everything works for your territories, the colors and all these other options. The newest thing is this export button right here. So when you click on this little arrow, you can export all the data for the single territory straight to Excel or a territory KML export. So now, instead of exporting all the territories or single districts or any of those other combinations I showed you earlier, you can do it for a single territory. So let's give that a go. So I'm gonna select KML file here, and I'm just gonna drop it on my desktop Click save. Now this one file, this one file has all the accounts, the reps, and the geography of the territory. So this is just one file that you would have to send to uh, the rep for that territory, and then they'd have everything they need. So let's see what it looks like when it's pulled in. All right, so now going through that import process, I select that file from my desktop, wherever it is, there it is. Click open, let it suck in all that information. And it's still loading. Give it a second to pull in all that data. Okay. And there you have it. 
So that entire territory, single territory, has now been imported into Google My Maps. It's all there. If you click on it, all the data pertaining to this territory is shown. And actually, all the accounts are also being displayed. So all of that information is included in one export. So this is the type of export you could use to send to a single sales rep so they could take a look at their sales territory, evaluate the accounts that are in there, and basically get the go ahead to confirm that as a future territory. Okay. All right. So those are all the uh, ways that you can export to Google My Maps. Let's go back to AlignMix. So we also have a new export feature that actually will help you convert a zip code based file to a county based file or even a state based file. Anything that you're using as a static layer, it can be converted to that level. So in this example here, I've got all of the US states um, and also the zip codes. So the zip code is the base geography. If I zoom in, you will be able to see all those zip codes by the five digits step. So now, let's say I'd like to convert this file to be at a county level. And before this update, there was no way to do that. So you can click now on File, Export, and now you've got this filtered data by static layer. So when you select that, you have an option to select one of the two extra static layers that you have in this file. And I'm just gonna go with US counties for now. Okay, then I click OK, and it's going to save this file. So now when I save this file, remember, this map is at the five-digit zip level, and now I'm going to convert it to a county-level file. So when you get this export, it loads up. You can see here on the left-hand side, let me zoom in some, we've got our original zip codes, and now we've got the U.S. counties appearing. If I click on the second tab, all the zip code data is shown here on the left. Oh, sorry. It's all the data is now summed up at the county level. You can see the counties here in column A. So now all you would have to do is do start a new file in AlignMix that is the county base and import all this data here. And you've converted from a zip code based file to a county based file, just like that. And that's something we've had requested many times and we put it in and it works great. So that is the other export feature that we have added. And you find that by clicking File and then selecting Filter Data by Static Layer. Another new addition that we've made to AlignMix is we've beefed up the Data Definition tool. You click Data Definition up here. It looks pretty similar to as it used to. You have all your data sets that have been imported here on the left-hand side. So we've got Sales, Potential Value, Index. But now we have a new tab. It's a histogram. So it basically shows you your data at a histogram level here. And Steve will touch on this a little bit more shortly. But this actually helps you find outliers in your data. So if you had anything on the negative side, it would be shown here, and you can actually omit it from some of your results. So with that, I'll be able to transfer uh, everything back to Steve. Steve, anything else you'd like to add? No. Um... That's it. I mean, the histogram feature is great for just seeing the distribution of the data and just doing a sort of visual diagnostic to make sure that you haven't got some spurious outliers or clusters. Um, so it's really quite a nice feature. OK, uh, is that it for your piece, Joey? Yeah, we've covered the most important piece, the Google My Maps exports, where you can export everything as the whole of the US as we, let me just jump back into there. So if we look at whoops, our sales territories, so just to recap what I've gone over is we've created a file in Alignmix. We've got other users that want to see what those maps look like, but they don't have a license to Alignmix Pro. So what you can do is this export that I showed you earlier, and then you create this file here in Google My Maps, and then simply share it with those other sales reps or other higher ups that need access to this information, but they don't have an Alimix Pro license. And you can do this at the district level. You can do it just for sales accounts if you wanted. If you didn't want any of your territories shown or districts, you can import your single account segments into here or all your account segments. As long as those KML files are under five megabytes, they'll be pulled into 
Google My Maps. And you can share this information with anyone. You can do it, as I mentioned earlier, at the district level. So all the territories assigned to a single district can be shown here and shared, or the whole of the US. And there's a few other combinations in there that you can, as uh, beta testers and users, play around with. But it's a very powerful tool for sharing and viewing all your data on a Google Maps view. And Steve, um, that's, um, that's about it for me. OK, that's great. So I'm going to take back uh, the presenter rights. And in doing so, uh, you are share my screen. And let's have a look at the participant list. Let's uh, unmute Joey. Um, unmute. Can you speak, Joey? Joey? Yes, you can. You're now unmuted. So the, uh, what I'd like to go through is probably the next most important feature in AlignMix 2018, and that is the Enhanced Territory Index Tool. Now, uh, for anybody who's been around and done uh, alignments over the years, you probably are familiar with this concept of an index. An index is a combination of values that you'd like to balance and you give a weight to each of the values. And typically, they're scaled up, so the average territory has an index of 1,000 index units. Now, in the previous version, 2016, we did have a basic create index tool. Um, and that was actually quite revolutionary. I'm not sure any other package has even a basic uh, index tool. But we've beefed it up and we've added some interesting new capabilities. So I'm going to take you through the new capabilities. So here we have create index. This particular um, system has 102 territories. So we're going to base and scale the index for 102. As I hit next, we then have um, the grid, which has been quite enhanced, uh, it's been enhanced a lot. So we have the data. So in this particular system, we have three uh, data series. We have calls, sales, and potential value. And we also have a number of different uh, segments, A, B, C, and D. And here are the weights. This is where we can put in the weights. So in a, a typical system, we might have, say, 40% on calls. Uh, we might have 10% on sales. Of course, you don't want to align based solely on your own sales, but uh, it's worth having in 20% on potential value and then maybe 10% on accounts. So in other words, just having an A account, uh, we want 10% of the index to uh, be balanced on that and maybe 10% on Bs and then 10%, which is the remainder on the total. Okay, now there's a couple of things that uh, this system does that uh, makes it quite interesting. First of all, uh, it's highlighting the fact that sales is negative for some accounts. And that'll be typically some small accounts that have taken some products and then shipped it back. But when it comes to indexes, it doesn't really make sense to have a negative index. So we can actually set it to a, a theoretical minimum value of zero. In other words, wherever a line mix comes across a value less than zero, it makes it um, zero. At the other end of the scale, you notice that the maximum sales for a specific account is huge, 23 million, whereas the average is 200,000. Uh, and this could be someone who's divert diverting products. Now, when it comes to the index, this is going to screw things up terribly. So you can also put a hypothetical maximum. I'm going to stick uh, $1 million as a maximum. And I'm going to leave this uh, drive time geography fields blank at this point, but I'm going to hit next. I'm going to create a new series, index 102. You can overwrite an existing series, but in this case, I'm going to hit uh, next. So this is the highest account, uh, China Vanadium Titano Manganite Mining Company. These are all fictitious, as you can tell. Uh, this shows the distribution in terms of the accounts. And the highest value is 21. So that's a sanity check. That's a good sanity check. And also the highest zip code. And in this case, it's in Manhattan. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of accounts in there. So it's come out at 142. Now, a territory is 1,000. So that's 14% of a territory. I'm going to hit Finish. Now, uh, there are different ways that you can view this. Uh, one of the things that we do is create charts. 
where we can have a look at that index 102. And in this particular case, you can see that uh, there are 28 territories within range, quite a lot high, quite a lot low. And that's one of the ways that you can use the index tool. But I'm now going to go back and I'm going to talk about um, creating a new index that has this drive time component. And this is really quite novel. Now, one of the things I should say is that these weights are now persistent in the file. In other words, you can now go back and, figure, and see what you use to create the index. Uh, when we've done projects ourselves, uh, there have been more than once, I'd say three or four times, when we've had to come back to an alignment, we just can't remember what we used as the weights for the index. And we've had to try trial and error. This now holds it in the file so that you can see it. So we have also added this drive time geography factor. I'm going to put, I'm going to make it 50. I'm going to exaggerate. Um, it's got a tool that can scale all except drive time. So when I do that, 50% uh, is based on this drive time. The rest is based on uh, the factors that I had before scaled in proportion. Now, just to give you a bit of background on the drive time, um, this is something that I believe only one other sales territory package has. I'm not 100% sure, but I think a terror line uh, has an index uh, tool in it. Uh, I don't think anything else has it. We've been working a lot on the optimizer, and as part of that, we've uh, developed this technology. It's quite novel. It takes um, the drive time from adjacent territories as the proxy for the drive time to the account. And by doing so, we can actually have it uh, as a true index um, that's stable across uh, quite a, a large number of scenarios. So let's hit next. Now, I could overwrite my existing index, but I actually want to play around with this and see uh, how it compares to that index. So I'm going to call it DT102. Hit next. Uh, still the same. The same account is the highest. It's now smoothed out because there's a lot of drive time for these, so it's not quite as uh, choppy. But a different zip code, uh, a larger, geographically larger zip code, is now the highest at 115. Hit finish. OK, so let's try and compare and contrast some of these, uh, these index values. I'm going to go and I'm going to put a label on the chart. So territory data, I'm going to put a label of index being the highest. And I'll give that a caption of I, colon. And I'm also going to put the drive time as another index, as another label. I'm going to call that DT. And I'm going to make that orange. I do like orange. Hit OK. So now we have two index, one scaled, the drive time one has drive time uh, factored in, the other one doesn't. So take Montana. Montana is a good example of where drive time is a big factor. You can see where the accounts, the accounts are spread out all over the place. To actually have this territory, you've got a lot of driving, a lot of windscreen time. So you can see that uh, index, uh, just the raw index numbers comes out at 800 with the drive time factored in, it's 1319. Now I put 50% in for the drive time factor. That's probably too high. Uh, I'm actually amazed at how well it works with even quite high values. You need some work, which is the other part of the index that isn't drive time to actually drive to, and that's maybe why it works so well. But typically I would, I'm expecting that the drive time will be 10 to 20% in a typical index, but we're trying to accentuate and show where the differences are in this particular one. Now it's interesting in the Nevada territory, no, not, uh, that's down here, um, that's a big geographic territory, but there's really only two centers. That's the Reno and Las Vegas. So here, drive time isn't such a big factor, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, other ones where it's quite noticeable, here we've got a Texas territory with um, scattered work all over the place. Um, if we go up to the East Coast, maybe have a look in Manhattan. So here we have Manhattan, uh, 1249 is just the raw index. It comes down quite nicely with the drive time index. And um, of course, and I should say that when we say drive time, we're talking about um, adjacent zips. Uh, so New Jersey, again, that's lower uh, as you'd expect. 
Um, so that gives you some idea of the drive time uh, factor. Um, as I say, we're not sure exactly where it should go. We're going to be experimenting uh, over the next year, but I, I would recommend a uh, index of between 10 and 20% uh, would work well for this. Okay, if you have any questions, um, send your questions to joey.domagala at alignmix.com or message him in the uh, Join Me app. We're now going to switch and talk about the launch offer. Well, uh, as part of the 2018 launch, we want everybody to be able to test uh, the new version. So no matter if you've tested it before and you're not a pro client, a pro user, uh, we're going to open up uh, for the rest of February uh, so that you can uh, test out the new version. So you can go to download, download it at alignmix.com slash download. And I should say it's already there. Send us your unique ID and we'll send you a new two-week trial for AlignMix Pro. You can find your unique ID under info, license, and copyright. Uh, send us a note if you have a problem. So that's for the standard users. For Pro users or people who would like to upgrade to Pro, we're giving an offer of three AlignMix Pro one-year licenses for the price of two. So it's effectively uh, a third off. Now, any licenses already purchased in 2018 are included against that uh, two license threshold. So if you've bought two licenses already this year, then you're entitled to a third one for free. Uh, if you bought one, you only have to buy another one and you get two. Offer runs until the end of February. All three licenses activated at the same time. Prices per license for the first year. Hope that's clear. There's also demographic data. Um, this is uh, census data that's been updated and projected by, um, by the data demographic provider. There's 290 series, 97 million data points, covers population, households, and property. And the nice thing about this data is it's perfectly matched with the AlignMix zip codes. So there's a, a good match. There's no um, misjoins miss or anything like that. Now, as part of this launch offer, we're giving that free with all pro licenses. We're also uh, embarking on training sessions, and these will occur in Orlando. And it's an opportunity for you to really become an expert user with AlignMix uh, and get the most out of your investment. We're going to cover not only the technical side of using AlignMix, but also managing the alignment process and interacting with, uh, with the rest of the sales organization. And we have a lot of experience with this in our consulting work, and we want to pass that knowledge along. We're announcing two sessions. Um, the first session is pharmaceutical focused. We have a lot of pharmaceutical clients. That is March 14th, 2018. And then there is a general training session on March 15th. Uh, it will take place at Cosmic's offices in Lake Nary, Florida, facilitated by Joey Domagala, who many of you know very well, and it's $500 per person. Maximum of eight people in each workshop, in each workshop so uh, it's a, done on a first-come, first-served basis. If it is oversubscribed, then we'll try and add more dates at a later stage. You can actually book those online at alignmix.com now. So we've gone through there at quite a fast pace. Uh, we've taken around about 35 minutes to do so. Um, do we have any questions? We have a couple that have come in. Steve, can you hear me? Yep, Chris. Great. So we've got one question asking about uh, the drive time portion of the index. Does mm -hmm. that take into consideration the rep's location? Um, it doesn't. And the, if it did, then it wouldn't add up to uh, a thousand. So it takes into consideration the amount of driving that needs to be done to go from an adjacent territory to that territory. And that's how a lot of reps work. They drive to an area and then they drive to surrounding accounts. And it actually works incredibly well, but play around with it and we'd love feedback on it. Okay, another question. Um, one person is asking, how do they get to the radial tool that we use for the territory, single territory export? Can you show that on your screen pretty quick? Oh, absolutely. So the radial tool, uh, you hover over a territory and then you right click. 
So, and then you have all of these tools. So just to very quickly go through them, um, it is, you can hide a territory, uh, you can lock a territory, you can look at the properties of the territory. So that's just a quick view. Um, you can export, delete the territory, zoom to the territory. Um, you can also zoom to the smallest cluster and that is the smallest part of the territory that is not inside the territory. So you can see there, there's a little point zip and I can just have that in there. So let's do that again, smallest cluster. Again, this is great for spotting these little um, shards of territory that split off. You get the idea. So it's right click on any territory. Okay. All right, we've got another question with Ooh, we've got a lot of them coming in. So people are asking about this drive time. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of questions flooding in from there. So is drive time from the diameter of the territory? And there's another person asking to explain further how the drive time is. Is it from an adjacent uh, Ter territory? Territory zip, it's from the adjacent zip codes. Hey, can you give a better example of drive time? So jump back into that. Yeah, let's just jump into that. So let's uh, let's take um, this zip code here, 03048. If there were accounts and work in here, what is the average time to go from this zip code to an adjacent zip code, the average time? Um, and th that's how it's calculated. And again, it's a, it's a novel feature. We've tested it. It works incredibly well, but we're open to uh, feedback on how that works for you. Okay. We got okay. another question here about Google Mind Maps. Um, and the question is, do we trust Google Mind Maps with confidential company data? Uh, this is one of the advantages of this particular setup is that you can you can actually ex choose what you export. So uh, it's, it is up to you and your company policy as to what uh, software systems you use. Um, but you could uh, not export critical terms if you don't trust Google Mind Maps. Uh, or you could actually have them use a package such as Google Earth, which is not um, internet connected in a data sense. And the reps can just view it on there. Uh, and there are other um, mapping packages that can actually uh, analyze KML and KMZ files. So um, you don't just have to use uh, Google My Maps, uh, but it, I'm sure that that will vary from uh, company to company, the policy on uh, whether you're allowed to, to use it or not. All right, we have another question about the drive time. It's asking, mm -hmm. so drive time is based on time between zip codes or a cluster of zip codes? It's for each zip code, it's the drive time to adjacent zip codes. So each zip code has a drive time to service that, the amount of work inside that zip code. Okay. I got another question about My Maps. Is My Maps a paid subscription from Google? Uh, no, it is free. Now, yeah. I think there are paid, you can get the G Suite, which is the company version. Um, but you either have that or you don't. So if if you have a uh, a Google account, you can use My Maps. Okay. Another question is: Can we download this version right now? Yes. So if you go to alignmix.com download, then you're actually downloading 2018. We uploaded that about an hour before this webinar. Okay. Now we have a question about the import process, and this is to Jordan. So he's asking, what if you're trying to import county-based data, but do not have pre-tied to the FIPS codes to make the import easy? Uh, Steve, would you like to answer that or want me to go ahead? Uh, I can answer it. So you, you're trying to import county-based data. So do you just have county names? Um, I believe so. Okay. Then you've got a bit of data cleanup to do. Um, we actually did some analysis uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there are obviously some counties that have uh, similar names to other counties. Orange County is the example we always give. I was actually staggered to find that 54% uh, of counties share their name with another county. So you really do have to go to the FIPS level if you want to use county-based alignment. Um, I was shocked that there are three Seminole counties, which is where I live, 
Um, so um, I think you've got some data cleanup to do to get to FIPS. Uh, hopefully the zip to FIPS will help you in that. So Jordan, if you happen to have zip codes for the data that you're pulling in, just let me know and I can send you a zip code to county FIPS code conversion. So you can kind of use a VLOOKUP tool to kind of get there. So you have that five digit code for the import. So drop me a line if that's something you would like and I'll forward that to you. Okay. Um, another question, is my maps part of AlignMix Pro or will it be available in the free standard version? It'll be available in the trial and the pro version, not the standard version. It is a premium feature. Okay, we've got another question. Um, so we've had a couple emails come in about international maps. Okay. So we do offer a couple international versions. If you go to alignmix.com slash international, we've got a couple extra maps that are available for free. And all you have to do, as Steve pulls that up, click on international. And the one that was in question was Canada. So all you have to do is click on download for Canada, launch that, a file, and then you'd be able to create files for Canada. Um, in AlignMix, it's one country per file. So if you're creating Canada, you're strictly in Canada. If you're creating US, it's just US and so on. So just to quickly show you how to do that, once you've installed that pack, you select the country here, so France. If you want to set that as your default, you do that there. And then you hit finish, and that will create the uh, the session for the other country. Now the My Maps does work internationally. So we have tested this and it works fantastically. Okay, a few more questions coming in. Will you have some tutorials coming out this month on these new features? Yes, absolutely. So every, every week or every two weeks, I post a new video on the AlignMix blog page. So that's a place for sure that we'll have a couple clips about some of these new features in the coming weeks. Um, and we'll also update some portions of the website so you can see that. And if you are interested in diving deeper, you can always send me an email at joey.damagal at alignmix.com and we can set up a private session where I can go through all this live with just you. So another question that's come in is, uh, can you install this uh, alongside the current version? Uh, no, this really does replace it. I should also say that this changes the file format, and that's a, quite an important point if you're working with colleagues. Um, if you save something in this version, it cannot be opened in 2016. So uh, if you save something in 2016, you can open it in this version. So uh, there's no real reason to use the older version now. Um, you should you should be able to uh, upgrade and download. The, right. Okay. We've got another question. So, the question is, where does this new index number appear in territory label? So, can you show it one more time? So, let's yes. say we've created this new index and we want to add that as a label. Okay. So, configure layers, and then um, under the territory tab there are territories and then there's this territory tab. Uh, this is where you would add it. So this is classed as territory data. So you could do the territory ID, the name, the rep, the district, number of accounts, uh, or the data. And then you select which data item here. Uh, so you can see that there. And you can give a, a caption or a prefix uh, there. So that's how you do it. And you can add as many of these as you want. I mean, you can add, um, sort of territory data and you could put say calls in or whatever you would like okay? okay so that's where you do that I mean it's also worth mentioning that it's obviously available in uh, the territory tables as well so you can sort by index drive time index um, you can plot let's see do a plot of drive time 102 doesn't change that much um, so there you have it. All right, we've got questions keep coming in. Does AlignMix work on a Mac? Uh, I wish it did, but the Mac is just fundamentally you know, a different system. So we can't easily use our code to create a Mac version. We may get there. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. There are some technologies for transferring 
programs from the PC to the Mac, but we're not there at the moment. And um, at the moment, the Mac market in the business world uh, cannot justify uh, the investment. We've got another question here from one of our pro users asking, is there a way to find a city quickly on the map? No, this is a short answer. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the if find you have tool, a zip code. Oh, if you have a zip code. So let's, um, if you've got a zip code, then there is a nice tool to do it. Uh, so we're in 32779. And if you do that, you can see uh, this is where uh, I'm located at the moment. So you just do control F or find zip code and then um, So this would be Philadelphia, 19103. Okay. We've got another question here. Uh, what is the cost of upgrading from Alignmix Pro to the version you're displaying right now? Well, that's a great question. So with Alignmix Pro, it is a subscription-based, so you get this free. So you, you can re-download, reinstall, and you have it for no incremental cost. Great. All right, another question. Is there a way to automatically create optimal territories to balance metrics and minimize drive time? Great question. So this is something that we hope to have added by now. It's proving to be very difficult. Um, we want to be best in class when we launch this. We have routines that work very well on, say, a state level, but don't scale up to a national level very well. But uh, we're pretty excited about some latest developments. So this is, this will probably be the next feature release in upcoming versions. So dare I say, uh, Align Mix uh, 2019. Um, but it is it is something that we're working on. Um, we have some promising avenues that we're going down. Uh, and as I say, we just haven't released it because it's not best in class at the moment, and it has to be for us to release it. Anybody who's a pro user, when we release it, will get access to that technology. Um, it will probably be a premium option for new users. So another reason to uh, jump on the AlignMix bandwagon at this stage. OK. I think that is all the questions that have come in. So that was a lot more than I had expected. That's great. Well, I really appreciate everybody's <laughs> time. It's uh, Friday afternoon. And uh, I'm sure you have other things to do as well. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, we certainly had a great deal of fun in developing Align Mix 2018. Um, we're delighted by the feedback that we're getting so far. And we hope that this will help many of you on this call and further afield to really maximize the, uh, the value that you're getting from your sales teams. If you have any questions, give us a call. And we can hopefully help you. Uh, we'll be sending this out as a video to look at uh, later. And um, as I say, if you want to circulate that, that's great. If you want to talk to us once again, that's uh, also something that we can do. So with that, I wish you a fantastic weekend and hope to speak to some of you quite soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.